Welcome back to The Artifacts. Today, we're going to look at the SpacePad 6 degree tracking system, meaning that it will sense the position, X, Y, and Z, and orientation, pitch, yaw, and roll, and it outputs in several different formats. It is capable of supporting two transmitters here and here, and four receivers across here. Let's look at one inside the computer. So you can see it's a full-length ISOBUS 16-bit board. And if we go around to the back panel, we can see it much more clearly. This is a cable that goes to the transmitter. We'll talk about the transmitter in just a moment. And this is a cable that goes to the receiver. The receiver looks like this. It's a little cube about the size of the tip of my thumb and contains three receiving coils long wire, maybe a 12-15 foot wire, that leads back to the computer here. Let's look at what a transmitter is. We have this cable that comes out of our computer here, and this is a typical transmitter. It's actually a floorboard, and you can see that the cable lands right here. It's detachable. So what is a transmitter, actually? Well, Ascension sold this unit as an OEM product only. It wasn't for end users. It was designed probably for Virtuality Series 2 gaming systems. And essentially, the vendors that bought this would make their own transmitter. It's actually a set of three coils. And I've got a floorboard here that's flipped over. And so maybe you can see a little bit better. There are three loops of, it's just speaker wire, actually. And it goes to a little terminator board. It's not very big. You know, it's a couple inches by a couple inches. And you can see that the wires are here. And then there are just three loops of wire. It's actually quite simple. I'll take you around one loop. And if we back up, you can see all three loops. And in fact, we name them. That's your X coil your Y coil, and your Z coil. And essentially each side of these parallelograms is about 19 inches. It doesn't have to be very exact. Um, the placement of the wire does not have to be overly exact. You can see I've got these tacked down with staples and it works quite well and quite accurately. The range of this device depends on the size of the coil. And with this setup, the whole board is about 30 some odd inches in diameter with these 19 inch parallelograms. And it gives me approximately a plus or minus 10 foot range side to side, front to back, and about a range up to about 10 feet of height. Um, it does have a limitation that you can't bring the sensor more than closer than about two feet away from the floorboard. And so if I take a sensor here, so sort of about this height is, is about the end of it. So very, if you were putting it on a helmet, very, very short people might have a problem. Um, typically, it's going to be up much higher. Let's look at how this guy scans. I've got a little diagnostic program here. And you can see position here. I got it centered in X, forward and backward in. Y, up higher in Z, down lower in Z, and at some point there, I, I've got it down close to the floorboard, and you can see that that's where it gives up the ghost. As I pull it away from the floorboard, you can see that it resumes operation. These are what's called Euler angles. All these numbers are signed 16-bit numbers, so essentially 360 degrees, think of it more as plus or minus 180 degrees, where 180 is 32,767, and minus 180 is negative 32,768. Um, Two's complement math. Um, so anyway, then you can see I'm rotating, so I can get my um, left to right movement. My elevation is the up-down, and you can see that that spins, and my pitch 
my roll, I'm sorry, is the third number, which is I can spin the, the unit on its own axis. In addition to Euler angles, you can configure the space pad to output a 3x3 three three matrix, which is a standard rotation matrix, and now we're talking about orientation, not position. Or we can get it to output quaternions, which is a four element vector, which also is a way of expressing rotation. Both quaternions and matrix orientation are nice. They prevent what's called gimbal lock. Gimbal lock is essentially when you have your sensor or receiver pointed straight up on the z-axis. At that point, with Euler angles, it can't then detect pitch and elevation. Um, and this is actually not a flaw with the tracker system. This is a flaw in Euler angle representation. And you got to live with that if that's your choice. A lot of people think naturally in terms of pitch, yaw, and roll. Space pad comes with um, a nice programming and hardware manual. It tells you how to set it up. It's a port mapped device. It uses four 16-bit ports on the ISA bus. Default address is 304 hex. Um, generally, you'll run it either in pulled operation. Uh, it also supports interrupt driven operation and all you do is you send it uh, one or two word commands and receive back between one and about a dozen words of data. It also comes with this little termination board for your transmitter. It's easy enough to hook up your own coil. If you don't want a 19 inch coil, you want to make it a whole lot bigger, um, you need to talk to Ascension because a few of the components on this little board need to be changed um, to accommodate a much bigger transmitter board. Well, I wanted to show you quickly what it takes to program the Ascension space pad. It's actually quite straightforward. So let's take a quick look. This is all programmed under DOS. Um, there is a Windows version of, the, of this code, but let's just talk about how it works. What you first do is just define the port addresses that the space pad uses. There's a base address at hex 304. The, where you fetch data from is at the base address, and then there's a status address. Essentially, it's the handshaking that tells you that data is ready at base address plus two. These are word addresses. Um, for the purposes of simplicity, I've defined a timeout, which just loops the program waiting for something to be ready. So now, if we look at what does it take to, to get data from the space pad, okay? This is going to be a little function that returns a short integer, a 16-bit word. We do an import word of status, test the 2-bit, and while that 2-bit 0, we just loop around unless the timeout has finished up. But once that 2-bit becomes set, then all we do is we return the word that's at the data port. So let's look now at what it takes to send data out from the computer to the space pad. It's actually quite simple. It's almost the reverse of this. Again, we have a simple function that passes in a word of data, 16 bits of data, set up a timeout, and we loop on the status port, check the low bit, the one bit, until it turns to a one. And once it's turned to a one, we just simply put the data out to the port. That's about as simple as it gets. So finally, let's look at what it takes to actually get a real tracker value, um, which would be x, y, and z, azimuth, elevation, and roll. And that's actually quite simple. We got a little function here. We uh, first parameter is a receiver number, which is either zero or one, because this program only handles two receivers. Um, it always goes to the first transmitter, and so we first send a word of data, which is a request for a point, and it's actually the opcode is in the low byte which is 4-2, and the tracker receiver selector is in the high byte, which is either F1 for the first receiver or F2 for the second receiver. And then we get six words of data, X, Y, Z, azimuth, elevation, and roll. And that is absolutely it. These are signed 16-bit values covering the range of the tracker in X, Y, and Z, and plus or minus 180 degrees in azimuth, elevation, and roll. Well, thanks. We'll see you next time.